everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're doing something a little different. We're going to be doing uh, an audio dampening panel, uh, building it ourselves. A lot of other channels have done this. Uh, mine's a little different because what this will allow you to do is also hang uh, your disc plates, your photos, your posters, anything you want on it, and it, be able to interchange them as much as you want. So this, I've already done one, but I wanted to go through this process again a little bit. This is for a standard 16 by 20 uh, poster frame. So what this will do is you want this measured out so it's just the inside size of the frame. So it stays moderately hidden. We're not really overly concerned about it as to whether or not it's actually hidden. So, but I went ahead and built this partly because uh, there's plenty of places to figure out how to build a standard rectangular frame. It's not difficult. I use two by two. Um, I would generally recommend one by two to give you a little extra space inside to uh, put as much sound dampening material as you want in there. Uh, I had spare two by two, so there you go. This is why we're using this today. Highly recommend having a hot glue gun. Just just drain my battery. Put that back on the charger. So, so one of the things you can, one of the ways you can do it is after you build the frame. Uh, I highly recommend you have a uh, staple gun. It makes life a lot easier if you don't have a staple gun. Hot glue gun will work. But you have to have something to attach the fabric to your frame. This is just to cover it up, make it look pretty. May look nice. So these, I personally don't really care about the fabric or the color or whatever. But this is, uh, I'm, I'm going to say this, a fat quarter. My wife's going to get on me about that one. It's a fat quarter that you can get generally from like Joann's. It's essentially sample fabric. But as you can see, it is a pretty much a perfect fit on our frame. So. All we're gonna do is just try to even this out a little bit in there. And then we're just gonna stretch this over nice and tight. I'm gonna staple this down on the uh, top and bottom edges here so they're not here. Because we're going to we're gonna be utilizing the front part of this audio uh, dampening panel. So and part of the reason I'm doing this is because I'm trying to get a lot of the, the sound that's going up my stairs from my basement into uh, essentially the kitchen at this point to just quiet down a bit more. It's there is basically it's a, just a straight shot of sound. So hoping this will help that situation out quite a bit. So if you have it, I highly recommend. But a staple gun is a wonderful tool. So to start off, I just want to make this nice and easy on us. Alright, so a fat quarter, barely, I'm going to be able to barely come over the edge with this one quarter on this size, this fat quarter. Like I said, you can get these at, uh, my wife picks these up at Joann's all the time. It's just sample cloth, like I said. Apparently the stapling is driving my dog nuts. I hear her barking upstairs. She doesn't know what the sound is. Incoming. It's just me, Ava. Hi. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ava, hey. This is what's making the noise, okay? You're good. <laughs> good girl coming to check on me. Good girl. Okay. <laughs> good girl. She's doing her job. Yeah. Good job. 
All right, and then, very simple, you get this. Great. Okay. So now, now we'll kind of wait a little bit uh, for the glue gun, the battery for the glue gun to warm up. Because... Or to recharge, excuse me. Ah, I cannot talk today. So we'll be back in a moment. Gotta wait for that battery to recharge. It was charged a moment ago, but the uh, glue gun apparently kills the battery pretty quick. I'm sure Barnacles would be pro with how much hot glue I'm using. And honestly, the hot glue is kind of a an extra measure to make sure that the cloth doesn't just start fraying and come off. Because that would really suck. There we go, okay. Not too bad, but like I said, honestly, we're not really going to see all the little edges here or anything like that once we're done. So, cover part's done. The side that's going to be facing... Uh, away from the walls done but like I said you're not gonna see it's because it's gonna be covered up by the poster so what I have here is audio dampening uh, foam for lack of a better word so what we're gonna do you're just gonna place it in there fits and honestly this is a one by one and it literally just fits in there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this over a little bit and we're just gonna dab it with hot glue on the ends here. Now this stuff's kind of a pain in the butt to cut and if you notice here I got a bit of a gap down here at the bottom so what I'm going to have to do is take a piece. I like to do two layer thick so I'm going to, have to take a piece of a second one put it here take another full one and then another piece of that uh, the one that I just cut and double layer it. But what I'm going to do is we're going to use a piece of uh, what is it? Uh, 1 8 inch plywood? It's I can't remember what else it's called. We're going to use this to create a bit of an air gap in between the two layers, which will help with uh, increasing the audio dampening. Well, I don't know. I can't, I can't remember what the number is for it, but it should help increase that a little bit. There we go. Not an absolute perfect fit. I mean, there's a little bit of gap, but I'll take that over overextended. So... Like I said, what we'll do is we'll just kind of shove these all over to the side. And we'll just give a little dab of hot glue so it stays. Yeah, I really can't stand the smell. I don't know how. My wife says it doesn't bother her. All right. All right, now that that part's done, what we're going to do is make sure it all sticks. So I want to place this right in the middle. I'm just going to... Like I said, what this will do is it'll create a gap. So that sound's gonna hit, go through the poster, go through this material, have a little bit of an air gap, and then go through another layer of material. That way, it should help reduce a lot of the noise coming through there a bit better. Now, since we had to cut two pieces, or a piece and get a secondary piece because obviously this doesn't fit by a singular. So what I'm gonna do is take this piece and make sure it goes over the gapped area. So we have the gap down here because of what we did. I'm gonna use this one up here 
and then put the other one here, which means I am going to need to, we'll just use this piece right here and put that right there. Like I said, no one's going to see it, so if it's a little rough, it doesn't really matter. And there's probably, you know, a hundred different ways you could do this. And if I'm doing it this way and it inspires you to do something that's a bit better, cool. That's what this is for. This is hopefully just to give you guys ideas, quite honestly. It's really what this is for. Again, yeah, a little more hot glue right here. And bam, two layers. Done, right? Not quite. So this is, since this is a vertical hanging, <clears throat> all right, so since this is 15 inches wide, math, that means our center point for this would be seven and a half inches. Uh, double check. 15 inches. Yeah, 15. All right, so 15 inches, we're just marking that right here at the top. What we have, our little uh, sawtooth picture hangers. These things are great, by the way. Uh, you can get a huge pack of them on Amazon really cheap. So I'll have the links for all the various little things that I use. But like I said, the uh, fabric, you can pick that up at Joann's uh, or any other fabric store, honestly. And there we go, just need two. Uh, but the insulation board I got from Amazon, this these things I got from Amazon it comes a little package, a little plastic container. Great. And for considering how many I'm gonna do and how many mistakes are possible to make, it's like a hundred or something like that. It's ridiculous. It's insane. And now what we're gonna use are these little rubber bumps. All right, and we're going to hot glue these to make sure that these actually uh, stick around. Because if you just use the, the stickiness on the back of it, they could end up falling off. Don't really feel like having that happen, so we're just going to hit the corners. Just a touch. Now you could use, you don't necessarily have to use the hot glue. If you have something like uh, Gorilla Glue, maybe even Crazy Glue, that could work just as well. But just something to help make these little rubber bumps semi-permanent. I mean, if you really wanted to pull them off, you could. All right, so there's all four here, the last one. And again, these don't have to be perfect. You're not going to see them. As long as they're keeping the wood off the wall, that's all you really need. Okay? Now, here comes the cool part. Stable, see, and now you see the insulation doesn't really come out. All right, so here's where we get to the part where we're going to be able to hang whatever we want on this frame. So, like I said, love this this artistry to this print. Love this thing. Anyway, so what we're going to do. So we are going to take this and well, I glance at it, basically just hit the kind of got the corners. This lid leaf is just inside the plastic with a slight margin. So okay, so continuing where we left off a couple days ago, uh, the Expansion slot covers were not working the way I wanted them to and the magnets from the hard drives were actually too strong and kept pulling off the fabric here, so 
So I go to Lowe's and they had these four pack of circular magnets. You know, not four pack, excuse me, an eight pack. So I'm gonna do two posters of these. Now these are just strong enough to do what I need. Now, if I was gonna do magnet to magnet, they'd be too strong, but magnet to these things, I managed to pick up off of Amazon really cheap. There's just enough there that it'll keep a poster frame and not rip off, especially once it's dried up. And I'm gonna switch from using hot glue here to using um, uh, this stuff, Gorilla Glue. Awesome stuff, by the way. So, can't use hot glue for everything, but almost everything. So we're gonna get these uh, planted, and what I'm gonna make it a little easier is, once I plonk these down, I'm gonna put one of these, uh, these are strike plates I picked up off Amazon. 250 pack for, I wanna say it was seven bucks, no, not seven bucks, it was, uh, I wanna say 17, I'll, I'll have a link in the description down below. But very cheap, and just nice thin metal, obviously magnetic, not a problem there. And I know some people are going to say, well, you could have used washers or whatever, but washers, problem with washers is hole in the middle. Kind of a given on that. And I was, I decided to look at prices on washers and these. Per washer, I think it was, I got eight washers per dollar or eight, eight of these strike plates per dollar that I paid. And if I was going to go buy washers, it was three. So for money wise, these work and I'll probably have more projects that those things will work really well with. So not really a bad thing overall to me. And like I said, it wasn't that expensive. So, so we're going to use Gorilla Glue this time around and see how well it does. I think I'll do a little better than the hot glue because I was informed that hot glue does not work well with fabric. So, learn that bit the hard way, apparently. Put that one there as best we can. And like I said, these magnets were really cheap from Lowe's. Uh, I want to say for the, oh, I don't know. The eight, for the eight that I've that I got, I want to say it was four bucks after taxes, something like a little more than four dollars. So not overly expensive. And wood and gorilla glue is supposed to make anything stick to anything. So find out shortly enough, won't we? I think this stuff dries pretty quick. All right, got these in the corner and we'll give it some time to dry. We'll come back. Well, that's not, yeah, okay, apparently I need to fix that one, so. Let's put that here instead. See if it's there. We go. That'll work a little better. All right. And once these are dry, we'll come back to them. Shouldn't take too long. 20, 30 minutes maybe. All right. Catch you in a moment. Now that the glue is. More than sufficiently dried, we're gonna take this down for a moment. Place that here, face down. And we are going to grab a couple of these. There we go. Got what we need. Alright, so Here's what I'm going to do, just to, we are going to sit these on the magnets. As centered as we can, there we go. What? 
man, I tell you what. We're going to put a bit of glue, glue, and what I'm going to do is put this down over here so that the weight of the frame pushes down on here to give this weight to put on the corners where we need. I'm going to line this up as best I can. Yep. There we go. And again, I'm going to give this some time to uh, set up, dry off. I think I'll put a weight, some weight down on here just to make sure. And then we should be good to go. Glue's dried, so now we get to test. Ah, see? That is perfect. Press that bit of glue down here on the sides. But now, <clears throat> when we hang this up, we just take the poster, bang. I don't feel like changing the poster. Boom. Comes right off. Then I can change the poster, put it back on. And now I have a sound dampening panel. That doesn't look like a sound dampening panel. It's a poster. It's great. Now I've already done this. It's actually a bit easier, quite honestly, with uh, disc plates. Because all I did with the disc plate magnet was I cut it in uh, to fourths. I glued each piece. And then because disc plates are already metal, worked right away. You know, uh, I, I've seen a lot of people, a lot of other ways of doing audio dampening panels but I thought this would be a little more fun uh, and it gives the option of actually changing the post route when you want to change the post route if you want to or put a painting here or something or any number of other things the only thing I could say is that if you're building one of these frames for a bit larger post route because I do have one of those I'm gonna end up having to build the only thing I would end up doing differently is on the back side putting a frame down the center of it just to give it some support all right so hope you guys enjoy the video uh, i put a, i will put a link in the description to the various little knickknacks and stuff that i bought from amazon to help out with this and like i said for the fabric i mean you could just go to any fabric store any craft store just buy a plain black fabric. These happen to be what are called fat quarters, which are generally free, and they happen to fit. I do think, and the nice thing is, if you come to the side of them, if you happen to come down the stairs, and you, it adds a little splash of color to the wall. If you don't feel like doing that, just use black cloth. I mean, but like I said, if you guys enjoy the video, press that like button, subscribe, and we'll get back to more tech stuff. I just want to go over this because once I have my basement finished and I actually get some framing back here in an actual wall. I'm actually, I will have some of these up here to deal with some of the echo that's going to end up being a problem once this actually has walls to reflect everything. So anyways, I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy.